Hello, my name is Jason Murray and I'm an architecture consulting engineer with Cisco Systems. This is the fifth in a five-part video series which walks you through the initial setup of UCS to get you to the point where you can install UC on UCS. In this video, VMware has been installed and is ready for virtual machine creation. I will go through the deploying of a VM using the OVA template and installing Communications Manager 8. So let's get started. When you install a UC app, a SAN is required to install it on. During our service profile setup, I configured a VHVA to connect to our pre-configured storage using the correct worldwide node name and port name. So the first thing I need to do is add that storage into VMware. Go to the storage section on the configuration tab and now click on add storage. I'm going to leave disk LUN selected because my storage is on a fiber channel SAN. Since I have the right node name and port name configured, VMware can already see my SAN storage. I'll select it and choose next. This shows a little bit more info on the storage. And I'll give my data store a name. This lets me configure how I want my disk layout. I'll leave it as default. Alright, VMware is ready to add my storage, so I'll click finish. It'll take just a moment for it to show up. And there it is. Now my storage is added. So now I have a place to install Call Manager. Since my ISO is located on another server, I'm going to bring that in locally to this server by placing it on my Data Store 1, which are my local hard drives. That way I'm not doing the install across the network. To do that, I'm going to right click on Data Store and choose Browse Data Store. And now I'll go over here to the Upload button and upload a file. And now I'll browse to where my ISO is located and choose my ISO. This is just telling me it will replace any file with the same name. I'll press yes. The file is now copying over from across the network. It's a rather large file and it'll take some time, so I'll skip ahead to when it's finished copying. The ISO is finished copying, so I'll close this window out to go and create my VM. Since I'm deploying this VM using a template, the first thing I'll do is go to the File menu and click Deploy OBF Template. Since I'm deploying the template with an OBA file, I will select Deploy from File and click Browse to go find it. Since this is an OBA and not an OVF, I need to use the drop down to select OBA to find OBA files. I'll select the file and click Open. I click next to continue. This just gives a little bit of information about the OVA template. I'll go ahead and click next. And now I'll give my VM a name. Now I'll click next. Now it wants to know where to place all the VMware files. I'll choose the data store I added earlier. And now I'll click next. This is just a summary of everything I did. Click finish and it's deploying the VM. And it's completed successfully. Now I'll click close. And the next thing I need to do is tell the VM to boot from the ISO I copied over earlier. To do that, I'll right click on the VM and choose edit settings. So I'll highlight my CD DVD drive and then select data store ISO file and go browse to my data store where my ISO is located. I make sure connected power on is checked and then I'll click OK. Now I'll just right click and power on my VM. And now I'll bring up the console on my VM. And as you can see it's booted off of my ISO. And it's ready for install. I'll choose no to not perform a media check. And now I'll go through and do a few more checks. We'll click OK to acknowledge. 
click yes to proceed with the install. I'll choose proceed. I'll choose no on applying an upgrade patch. And then I'll continue with the installation. Time zone, I'll choose New York. I want auto negotiation, so I'll choose yes. And I'll leave the M2 size as default. I will be using a static IP, so I'll not be using a DHCP server. Now I'll set a host name and my IP information. I'm not going to use DNS, so I'm going to choose no. I put in my administrator ID and password. And now I'll put in my information for my security certificate. This is the first node in the cluster, so I'll choose yes. And now I'll put in my NTP server address. Make sure a valid NTP server can be reached by the server or installation will not continue. Now I'll enter the system security password. I do not want to configure it for mail, so I'll choose no. And now I'll input my application username and password. This is used to log into the administrative web page. Okay, the installation wizard is complete and is now ready to install Communications Manager. The installation process can take a while, so what I'll do is move the video forward to when the installation is finished. So the install is complete, and now I'm getting a login prompt in my console window. Now what I'm going to do is open my web browser to connect to the server and log in. Now I'll put my IP address of my server in. I'm at this default web page. I'll click on this. OK. Yes. And now I'll log in with my administrator account. And I'm in. Now I can start configuring devices or restore from a backup. And that completes the video series on UC on UCS. To get more information on this, as well as download free OVA templates like the one I used, go to the UC Virtualized URL below. Thanks for watching, and always thanks for choosing Cisco.